to Nodder Castle. Just 20 kilometers south of Aberdeen on the savage Scottish coast is adjacent to the town of Stonehaven. The castle is situated on a dramatic promontory of rock which thrusts out from the Stonehaven shoreline. This flat-topped redstone island is surrounded by the choppy North Sea and was once connected to the mainland by a natural causeway called the Fiddlehead. To protect a medieval castle from attack, the Fiddlehead was deliberately hacked away and a new access route was cut into the cliffs. The plunging narrow entrance was designed to be a nightmare for any would-be attacker. This is because of its twisting pathway, blind corners and arrow loop 26-foot tunnel, which would have made it easy for archers to pick off incoming assailants. Now if an attacker would make it to the castle gatehouse, they'd have been amazed at what lay beyond. Behind the bottleneck of the Nodder's entrance, the castle stands on a flat top rock which measures more than four acres in size. Unlike other castles, the Nodder has the luxury of being able to spread itself across the top of this magnificent rock. Naturally defended on all sides by the lashing ocean and ragged rock formations, Whoever happened to occupy this castle would spread themselves across the cliff, indulging any desire in large and luxurious living quarters. This even included a palace fit for a king. Dunnetcher Castle has played a role in far too many important moments in Scottish history to mention here. However, one of its grislier moments came during the Wars of Scottish Independence. Fearsome Edward I, Longshanks, King of England from 12... 72 to 1307 is commonly known by his nickname Hammer of the Scots. After a successful conquest of Wales, Edward set his sights on capturing Scotland and consolidating his hold upon the British Isles. Edward's advances into Scotland stirred up national resistance, led by the charismatic William Wallace in 1297. Now Wallace led the Scottish rebellion against the English invasion and besieged Dunnetree Castle held by the English troops. Now, 4,000 English soldiers hold themselves within the stone chapel inside Dunnetree Castle, hoping that that would spare them from death. Wallace's army ransacked the castle and torched the church, burning alive those within. Some, of course, managed to flee, but their only choice was to leap off the steep cliffs into the thrashing sea. In 1650, Dunnetree Castle was thought to be the most secure spot in the whole of Scotland. As a result, it was the perfect place to guard the Scottish crown jewels, protecting them from the advancing English army of Oliver Cromwell. Now, all the treasures of Scotland were held in the castle, including the full Scottish regalia, which encompasses the ceremonial crown, scepter, and sword of state. However, in 1651, Cromwell's army, led by General Overton, laid siege to the castle. With just 69 men inside the castle and a puny 42 guns, their chances of holding out against the English onslaught were pretty hopeless. Now, it would have been a terrible blow for national pride if the Scottish crown jewels had fallen into the hands of the English. Because of this, Reverend Granger of nearby Kinniff Parish concocted a daring plan. His wife, Christine, was a close friend of the wife of Governor Ogilvy the commander in charge of the siege inside the castle. Now, during the siege, Christine Granger, friend of Governor Ogilvy, the commander-in-chief of the siege inside the castle, and his wife, heavily pregnant, rode up to the English troops bombarding the castle. She appealed to the better nature of the English commander, General Overton, saying that English gentlemen should naturally spare women from war, and that she'd like to visit her close friend inside the castle for moral support. General Overton was all too kind. He let Christine Granger pass into the besieged castle, and then when inside, she proceeded to wrap the Scottish crown in her skirts and conceal the orb and scepter in her distaff, which is a tool used for spinning wool. Now, she then smuggled all these items from the castle back to her husband's parish. They buried the crown jewels deep beneath the pulpit of their church for safekeeping. It was only some ten years later during King Charles' Uh, restoration when the jewels of Scotland were finally unearthed. Nowadays, Donater Castle is almost entirely ruinous. The castle suffered badly during Oliver Cromwell's bombardment. 
One of the most interesting ruins at Denadar is the um, circa 14th century tower house, quite literally a little castle inside the castle. Now the tower house tradition was unique to Scotland and represented a cross between a noble mansion and a fortified residence. This particular example would once have extended to three stories high with an ornate separate chamber for the Lord. The tower house was trumped though by the construction of the polygonal palace at the brink of the headland. The palace would have been built in the early circa 17th century, a phenomenal accommodation designed to maximize the dramatic views across the neighboring coast. The palace was filled with large kitchens, a bakehouse, and a brewery. Now, the crowning jewel, so to say, the palace's accommodation enjoyed the ultimate accolade, where it was literally fit for a king. Charles II had lodged there in the king's bedroom in the mid-1600s.